Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one, Dan? We're watching Thor Love and Thunder. Oh, boy. Now I know for a fact there's nothing wrong with this one. I have doubts about that. Okay, I was lying. There's something wrong here. Otherwise, it wouldn't have a pitch meeting. Let's go find out. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have a new Thor movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And let me tell you, he's dumber than ever. Oh, okay, yeah, just real. He's not smart at all, this guy. All right, well, I can't wait to see him team up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, we kind of ended Endgame with them taking off onto adventure together. Oh, yeah, and let me tell you, sir, the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to be in this. Oh, boy. What? <laughs> yeah, just ever so briefly. What? So, we're going to meet this guy, <laughs> Gore, right? And all his people have died, and his daughter, too, even though he's been praying to their god. Okay. And then he meets his god, who it turns out is a big old jerk, and then he gets chosen by the Necro Sword and kills the god. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, so now Gore has become the god butcher, and he's just gonna go on a rampage. He wants all gods to die. Why? Well, he thinks they're all selfish, and they only care about themselves. Dang, well, it's gonna be crazy to see him going around butchering gods. Oh, yeah, yeah except, no, that is gonna be happening off screen. But oh. oh. He's the god butcher. Yeah, so he's off, he's off doing that. We're not gonna see that. I would like to see it. No. Yes. God dang it. Anyway, so then we're going to meet up with Jane Foster. And what's going on with her? Well, she has stage four terminal cancer. Oh, oh my no. God, that's terrible. Yeah, but don't worry, sir. Everything's still going to be hilarious all the time. That's, it that, shouldn't that be. That wasn't my concern. Still plenty of jokes per minute, sir. Don't even worry about it. Right, okay, maybe there shouldn't be in some parts. We're going to be cruising at a furious JPM. All right. You know those screaming goat videos from the internet? From like from like 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, we're bringing that in a bunch of screaming goats the whole <laughs> oh, time. No. Right? I mean, that was really really funny 10 years ago. I guess it might still be funny now. Well, I hope you do like it, sir, because if it doesn't land the first time, it's certainly not going to land the next seven. Wow. What? Oh, geez. So anyway, Thor finds out from Sif that Gore is butchering all these gods in amazing ways that I'm never going to show you, and he's on his way to New Asgard next. Oh, no. Yeah, New Asgard has become, like, super touristy. Like, they have an ice cream shop called the Infinity Cones. It has, like, an Infinity <laughs> Gauntlet theme. That kind of seems like it's in poor taste. No, it tastes fantastic. I mean, it's ice cream. But, I mean, the Infinity Gauntlet was used in like a worldwide tragedy that's kind of messed up for a theme. Yeah, nothing a little ice cream can't solve. That's a good point. Yeah, okay. So Thor shows up to New Asgard and he sees that Jane is now also a Thor. What do you mean? Well, turns out back when they were dating, Thor had asked Mjolnir to protect Jane, so that's what he's doing here. Wow, well, it's gonna be cool to see her transform for the first time. Yeah, except no, that's off screen. That's off screen too. <laughs> Why? Okay, all right, dang it. So anyway, now she has this super cool Thor outfit, because that's what happens to you when you wield Mjolnir. That didn't happen to Captain America when he had it. Hey, shut up and so then Gore steals all these <laughs> children and runs away. Oh, super rude. Yeah, and so his plan is to lure Thor because he just knows he's going to come to the rescue of these kids. He believes that all gods are selfish and only care about themselves, so his plan is to capture people that they care about because they would definitely come help them. I... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, okay then. So Thor goes to the city where a bunch of gods live, including Zeus, and he tries to get them to help, but they're all scared of Gore. Oh man, all these gods in one place? That's the perfect setup for a Gore the Butcher attack scene. Right? Oh, you know it, sir. Anyway, uh, oh, they impale no. Zeus with his own thunderbolt and steal it and run away. Oh, uh, impaling people and stealing their belongings is tight. Oh, my God. That won't hold up in court, by the way. That wasn't an official admission of guilt uh -huh. or confession. All right, so then they go fight Gore, and he steals Stormbreaker. Why? Well, it turns out that Stormbreaker is the key to the realm of eternity, where eternity will grant one person one wish. Oh, what's up? It just seems like maybe it would have been easier for Thanos to just go there instead of trying to gather all the <laughs> Infinity Stones. Yeah. yeah. Or for the Avengers to go there, for that matter, instead of inventing time travel. Yeah, well, see, the thing is, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about <laughs> previous right. Marvel movies. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. So does Thor just summon Stormbreaker back? That's a thing he can do, right? Yeah, no, I guess it's not within his summoning range. He needs to change service provider. And then they find out that <laughs> Mjolnir is actually draining Jane's life force, so if she uses it again, she'll die. I thought Mjolnir was protecting her. Now it's killing her? Yes. Yeah, sting it, Mjolnir. <laughs> what the heck? So Thor is like, all right, well, Jane, you can't come fight with me, and I'll so Valkyrie got stabbed, and Korg is just a face. He lost his body. Oh, Man, no. it's going to be hard for Thor to fight Gore on his own. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely, Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because he's not going to be alone, actually. What do you mean? Well, he lends his Thor powers to all the kids, which is a thing he can do now. So they all fight Gore and his monsters. Oh, wow, 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 wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, and so then our hero, you know, the guy with the army of child soldiers, attacks the bad guy who's, you know, the guy like who that. thinks gods should be nicer to people. That's, I, mm, I don't know, maybe don't 
don't phrase it that way. Right, okay, the good guy fights the bad guy. Yeah, definitely keep it vague. That sounds better. Yeah. Anyway, then Jane shows up to help, too. But she'll die. She does, yeah. But then Gore is so moved by their love, when he makes his wish, he doesn't wish for all gods to die. What does he wish for? He wishes for his daughter to come back to life. But then he dies, so Thor kind of has a daughter now. Very cute. <laughs> and Korg okay. has his body back, and he falls in love. How did he get his body back? I don't know. And so that's about it. What do you think? <laughs> well, it sounds like a lot of fun. But do you think maybe we're going a little too hard on the Marvel humor? Sir, it's impossible to lean too hard on the Marvel humor. Trust me. Uh, no. And that's not what I heard at all. <laughs> <laughs> I heard much the opposite. Mm. Yeah, I heard that uh, they couldn't, they told too many jokes too often. And it was like pretty much all the way through. Yeah, if you're gonna you know, kill off a character who's been here since pretty early in the MCU, and then from cancer on top of that, it's gotta be a little bit sad and dramatic. You can't just joke your way through the whole thing. Exactly. You know, that's not a healthy way to get through it. No, no, it's not. Sometimes you have to accept that people are not going to be here forever. Right. <laughs> For whatever circumstances that is. And deal with the, you know, the repercussions of that. Yeah. We all have a we all have limited time on this planet, so you, when it's your time, it's your time. Yeah. But this is another movie directed by Taika Waititi. Mm -hmm. So you know he did uh, he did the one the Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. He did uh, what we do in the shadows. So you already see what he's all about. I said, don't get me wrong, I like his brand of comedy, but there's a time and a place for comedy, and this probably wasn't it. Probably not. I mean, you could have some humor yeah. going throughout this thing, but it's like, you don't need to make that everything. Right. You know? Sometimes it literally just gets old, and people are like, please stop. You know? Yeah. And that's kind of, that was kind of the reaction here. I'm not surprised that this got a pitch meeting. I mean, all the, M all the MCU movies got one. So mm -hmm. Now, what you do need to do with a movie is actually show what's going on instead of telling us what's going on. Yeah. You can't have a character who's going around slaying half the gods in the universe and then not show any of it. Yeah, that's annoying, isn't it? It's like, man, come on, how many gods are there? In fact, you have a whole city dedicated to gods here. And you're not going to let us see any but, like, one or two of them? Right. The whole point of film as a form of media is so the audience can see it. If you just wanted to say it, just write a book. You cheated the audience out of that. Yeah, I mean, especially, too, because you got a good actor to play the role of Gore there, and you didn't use it. Yeah, Christian Bale, from what I understand, he, he was that movie. Yeah. Christian Bale, yeah. And he probably wasn't in it enough to really make it that interesting. What do you do about that? Yeah, you're wasting opportunities there, you really are. I don't know that I can fully blame Taika Waititi here. That's also the problem of Disney's writers. They've been going down roads like this for a while now, thinking that they know what's better. And Taika, of course, going along with it, but still. I gotta say, though, as the director, don't you have to have some say over the script that you're dealing with? Yeah. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. He went along with it. Yeah, I was going to say, he, it's like, you're right. The writers have been abysmal for some of the Disney stuff that's come out lately. But the directors are just, are just pushing it along, too. They're not doing anything, as far as I can tell, to stop it. No, their job is to do what, they, what they're told to do. Mm -hmm. Probably at some serious repercussions if they don't. Which, to me, it's like, you know what? Your money's not worth it. I'm not interested. And not if, not if I have no creative say over this. Right, I mean, if it's going to hurt my career, why would I want to do anything with Disney? Exactly. If you're the only people I can get work with, and I can't ever have a creative backbone in this place, what good is that? Yeah. I'm just a, another cog in your machine. That's not the way I want to do that, and hopefully hopefully, a lot of directors are catching on. I don't know if they are, though. Mm -hmm. You know, because it seems like the only thing that matters here is that money talks. Money talks, and it's like you, you, uh, you either do what we say or don't count on working with us again. And that's kind of the sad part is you want to see you want to see these directors and these producers have their artistic vision come to life on screen, and sometimes they can't. Yeah. And it, it you know really ruins the experience for the audience. It ruins the experience for the actors, and it probably ends up costing them money, which is the whole opposite point of what they were trying to do in the first place. I would think so, because yeah, have you seen that, what these inflated budgets are like with some of these Marvel films? It's ridiculous. Yeah, and you don't see where that budget was at. Take a uh, take Rings of Power. That thing cost a billion dollars to make for these two seasons? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it cost anything close to that. Yeah. It almost looks like it was done on an actual budget. <laughs> so. I think the story just came out recently, too, about the Acolyte. Their budget was actually higher than what they've been saying this whole time. <laughs> and everyone's just like, where's the money going? There's no way you're profiting. No. That should tell you that you're doing something wrong. But you know what? You keep making your mistakes. Disney, Marvel, whatever. If you don't want me to watch it, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Say, it's your money and it's your shareholders' money, too, so yeah. just remember that. I'm certainly not going to 
not going to subject any of our uh, audience to, to these movies, to our reactions to them. Right. I don't want to. It doesn't look interesting to me. So, no, me neither. I mean, you'll have to, to be the better judge of that, fam. But uh, but unless, like, you came out in mass and told us, hey, we want you to watch this, I'm not going to do it, you know? I think there's far better projects out there. Oh, yeah. There's stuff that's much more rewatchable out there than this. Absolutely. But it exists, and you got a pitch meeting there. So, if nothing else, the pitch meeting tells us what we need to know. Yes. Don't watch the movie. Watch the pitch meeting. Mm. <laughs> I'll save you two hours. <laughs> But that's going to do it for us, guys. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us all and all those things up there, and like and subscribe again. And until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys.